fashion industry at the moment is a huge problem. The way things are at the moment is, is not good, especially with fast fashion. Fast fashion and social media go hand in hand, so you have a consumer who's seeing something that an influencer has posted online, they're then purchasing it, but they don't know what size to to get it in, so they might get the same item in three or four different sizes because it's free to get it the very next day. They get it, they try on whichever one suits best and then they'll send the other three back. That is like common practice. A current trend that you're seeing at the moment in the UK is that people are buying items to wear on social media, post it once and then never wear it again. And Barclays did a study a few years ago which found that 9% of fashion items in the UK were being bought for exactly this purpose. All of that's contributing to a serious CO2 issue and 10% of all greenhouse gases uh, come from the fashion industry. From a brand's point of view, just taking the returns, in the next two years, it's gonna cost them a trillion dollars to deal with those returns. And that's a figure that is 75% higher than it was three years ago. So it shows how quickly we're moving in the wrong direction. And the reason it costs so much is because in the US alone, consumers are throwing out over 2,000 items of clothing every second. I think we can all agree, based off those stats, that the current system doesn't work. It doesn't benefit brands, it definitely doesn't benefit consumers and it's not working for the environment. We already know from consumers that they want to wear extravagant garments on social media that they're not going to then walk down the street and wear. Digital fashion is the ability to apply garments that aren't physical to your body in real time. And this may be a solution to some of the fashion industry issues. And if you take out a physical item, there's no textile production, there's no shipping, it arrives instantly and it fits you perfectly, so there's no need to buy multiple sizes. There's no waste, there's no returns, there's nothing to physically throw away. And in the end, for those people who are looking to buy a garment just to post online, there now is a sustainable alternative with no downside. As London Fashion Week was quickly approaching, I had an idea about putting on a show that didn't actually have any physical garments. And it posed the question, can digital fashion help solve some of those issues that we've discussed earlier? The online reaction was incredible. It seemed that people didn't want to just learn about digital fashion. There was already a desire to engage with digital fashion and to explore a sustainable alternative, which is why it snowballed from being just a standalone exhibition to showcase that this tech is here and it's available to becoming a digital fashion brand called Defy. Typically, fashion shows take three to four months to put together. The Defy show only had seven weeks. Because there was so much to do, we started straight away. And the day after we signed off the fact we were gonna actually do this thing, we went down to London and saw 14 different venues. And by the very last one that we almost didn't go to was the one we ended up using. Then we had the artwork that needed to be created. We had to find the models. We had to sort the music, which was a whole creative world that I'd never been a part of that uh, posed some problems, the TV screens. And then finally we have the garments. This is 25 different outfits from scratch that needed to be worked up in about four or five weeks. So to say we were cutting it close was a bit of an understatement. Because the Defy show is the first ever digital fashion show, I'm assuming that anybody who walks through these doors has no idea about augmented reality. So when you first walked in, there was a few experiences that allowed you to engage in digital fashion and try some clothes on, and also learn through augmented reality how the fashion industry is currently working and how potentially augmented reality could fix some of those issues. So by the time you get round to the actual fashion show, which is gonna have these models walking around in bike shorts and sports bras, and the user and the audience will hold their phone up to the models and apply the clothes digitally to them in real time, everybody knows what digital fashion is and what augmented reality is, which should hopefully make for a smooth event. It's the day of the show. It looks like on paper that we've got everything ready to go. We've arrived at 10 o'clock on location to set everything up. The models are arriving at three, which should give us enough time for a couple of test runs. And then the doors open at six and the show starts at seven. This will have a video on loop. The setup is, it's coming together at a pretty quick pace. I mean, people have been arriving all day and sort of like getting on with it. So I'm trying to just be on hand and help out. I'm a little bit worried. Now it's all up and it all looks fantastic. If the effects that I've built are actually working is now my number one concern. 
They, they turn the screen on, the projector's on, and it works. And at this point, I'm, I'm, I was sweating, but I was happy because that, that meant that we were greenlit. All the other stuff was slowly falling into place at that time as well. My responsibility was to get the effects working, and it was, so that was just a huge weight off my shoulders. I'm on cloud nine, everything's working. We've got the models walking around, they're all in sync. It's just working perfectly with the timing, with the music. I'm super happy, I'm like, we're done with this problem, let's move on to something else that's going on. And then somebody points out that, why don't a few people sit down in where the audience will be sitting and see if it still works? Because the camera only picks, is body tracking. So if there's another body in the camera, what happens then? And we very quickly discovered that it would move from the model, the clothes would move from the model and over very poorly onto the people in the audience. So just, just as I thought we were over the hump, we were sort of like pulled straight, straight back in. So we're up against it at this point. We don't have the time to really be dealing with this problem. So quickly got the team together, try and figure out how can we position this camera to only record the models and not record the audience. And we tried taping a bit of the lens off, completely redesigning the seating layout to get the audience out of the way, and then positioning this camera in all different angles. And finally, we managed to find a small pocket of one lens width that would allow us to record the models and not record the audience. So I'm relieved. Everything seems to be working and there's an hour to go until the doors are open. So the only thing left to do is one more rehearsal, a few final touches, and double check that all the tech is working. What is that? I mean, it's a bit pixelated, isn't it? Yeah, that's supposed to be that's supposed to be blurring out the whole body. I thought that was going to be closer together, but okay. Is it just this one? No, there's supposed to be the arrows above you. But I mean, the arrows. That. It's also not covering the body, and that I think is because it thinks the filter's landscape. Yeah, that's what I mean about the camera. Yeah. No, we need to speak to Craig about putting the camera on top and then see if it works. Yeah, because that one's on the top. I don't know why some of them. Because this, I think it's just the way they set the Snapchat ones, but okay, we'll go and sort that out. But this is, the, the Snapchat ones, both of them are not working, so I need to either update them, obviously soon. So there's two problems now. One, they're not tracking properly, so it doesn't look right. And then secondly, it's the quality is rubbish. When I left, neither of these things were happening, and now they are happening. So I'm thinking to myself, how is this possible? How, how have we gone from them both working and not being a problem to being another problem in what is becoming quite a problematic day? Hmm. If you if you had it on back as it was, oh here we go. If you if you're walking into the show for the first time, these this is what you're going to see first. So it it was really important that we figured this problem out. And in the build up to the show, they, we'd done lots of testing on these screens, and it was all working fine. So there was no rhyme or reason again why this shouldn't be working. And yet here we are with another problem that shouldn't be happening less than an hour before the show starting. So to find out that after the bit of testing that we'd done, that it was just a simple drop down menu, simple human error. I mean, the relief sort of just washed over me. It's 15 minutes until the doors open. All chances of a smooth, <laughs> a smooth experience have gone completely out the window. We've got just enough time to do one rehearsal just to make sure everything's working. We do it and everything that could possibly go wrong with it went wrong. The lights didn't come on, the music wouldn't run time right, the show wasn't time right, the models didn't come in on time, nor did they keep the right distance, nor did they exit on time. So now it's six o'clock and the, the last record, the last run through was a shit show. I'm not opening those doors until we've got this right, so we need to very quickly get together and figure out how to do it. We all had this two hours ago. How are we now not doing it? Everybody who's been working tirelessly throughout the day on getting this thing set up is in this one room trying to figure out these problems, figure out how to get the lighting working and the timings with the models coming in and how far they should be set apart. And between all of us, we got it figured out in about two full run-throughs of the show. 
From that point onwards, we're happy that the show is in the best place it can possibly be, so we can open up the doors and the public can experience the show. It was a very quiet room in the best way possible. It was cool. I can't lie. It felt like I was in a physical fashion show while just watching it through like the Snapchat lens and that. It was a proper dope atmosphere. It was a bit of a mind blow because like we, we just didn't know what to expect or how it was going to work. Yeah, I'm excited. It, it kind of looks as if well, it's hard to argue that we're not going towards an AR future. So it's a really exciting space as the tech gets better, there's new capabilities, as, every, as the internet speeds get better and there's better hardware. like. Stuff you're gonna be look what you can already do on like a little tiny device on your phone. It's like pretty crazy. So as everything gets better, the opportunities will become more creative, and that's gonna be an exciting space over the next sort of five, ten years. I think Defy, it sort of snowballed, so it wasn't meant to be a clothing brand, but it sort of turned into Defy, a brand, and now we'll do more clothes. Just try and grow it. I mean, anybody who grows a fashion brand, you know, you need to get it on the right people. The designs need to look good. I mean, it's clearly got a message. If you wear Defy, you know what that means. If you're posting about it on social media, it says a lot about you. So it would just be, a, you know, I'm not expecting overnight success. I think it would just be continuing doing cool shit and <laughs> getting it on the right people and like, can it actually be a fashion brand, even though there is no clothes?